जय हिंद स्टूडेंट इन द लास्ट लेक्चर्स ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन सैटेलाइट कम्युनिकेशन वी गो थ्रू द वेरियस एप्लीकेशन ऑफ सैटेलाइट कम्युनिकेशन दैट वॉज वी सेट वेरी स्मॉल एपरेचर टर्मिनल देन डी बी एस टी वी डायरेक्ट ब्रॉडकास्ट सैटेलाइट टेलीविजन आफ्टर दैट द थर्ड एंड मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एप्लीकेशन of satellite communication in today's scenario is global positioning system gps actually gps when we are talking about gps actually it is a navigation system which is based on the satellite communication and uh, it is uh, widely used in these days as for your traffic example for finding your routes to locate the various locations throughout the globe all these things can be easily done by this gps so basically the main utilization or main uh, use of this gps is positioning navigation monitoring and surveying applications by the using this gps you can mark any position of individual with a gps locator you can navigate the various uh, uh vehicles or aircrafts or submarines or anything which you want to locate on the globe and also it can be helpful for the surveying application so basically this process is done by the use of satellites which is uh, orbiting around the earth and they are precisely identifying the location on the earth by measuring the distances from the satellite so now about the history of this gps actually gps name came from the nav star and it is developed by the us uh, military uh, us military for their military application initially and that nav star basically mini means navigational satellite timing and ranging so initially gps was a military application but after 1980 it was uh, uh, used by the civilian application also as per this us nav star or gps india also launched its own gps system that is called navic and that full form is navigation with indian constellation it is also known as rnss regional uh, navigation satellite system so basically when we are talking about gps so first thing is come came came over my in our mind that how you are going to locate the basic uh, position of a system or position of a vehicle on the earth or or the through the globe so basically they are precisely identifying the location on the earth by measuring distances from the various satellites that is used for the gps so actually in the gps uh, original gps system there are 24 satellites in the meo uh, orbit and they are continuously rotating uh, uh, orbiting around the earth but uh, whenever you want to identify any position or location around the globe minimum four satellite are used basically in gps it can locate the information in 2d or 3d so when we are talking about the 2d actually in that case three satellites are sufficient to locate at three 2d position but when we want to locate or identify the 3d location of any system there must be four satellites in which three satellites are required to provide the three distance measurement and the fourth is used to remove the receiver clock error so now one by one we are going to discuss this uh, basic principle so as you can see in this diagram below this aeroplane which is not showing here that there is earth surface and this aeroplane is flying in the atmosphere in the outer atmosphere or we can in the say in the space there are 24 gps satellite but at a time these four s1 s2 s3 and s4 are going to locate the location of this uh, aeroplane in the uh, atmosphere so 
in the this arrangement actually three satellites initially one two and three they are just giving the distance from the satellite to the object and the fourth one is used to remove the clock error so how it is going to be done so you can easily understand here actually whenever you are what uh, do you are talking about any satellite uh, that satellite is basically measuring the distance from the aeroplane by ray, uh, velocity of uh, yeah, wave signals traveling to the object and coming back from the object and by this velocity dividing by the time taken we are going to take this the uh, distance r i for the one that is r 1. So, actually what how it is going to locate for this r i distance means that is act as a radius and for this radius r i there is a sphere around this satellite. Similarly, a another sphere of r 2 radius is created around this and third one is r 3 that is created by the third one satellite. By combining all these three spheres at the same time, the point of intersection on which all three spheres are going to intersect each other, that point is the actual location of that set, uh, that object which you want to locate. The fourth one is used here to remove the clock error. Why we are talking about this clock error? So, basically take this example, uh, take this consideration that in GPS satellite, each one of the satellite, they are carry three atomic clocks and they atomic clocks are calibrated against time standard in GPS control station around the world. So, this results the GPS time and a time standard that is available in every GPS satellite. Means, as per the time zone of the around the world, GPS satellite atomic clocks are adjusted and calibrated. So, basically what is going to happen that the receiver clock is allowed to have an offset relative to the GPS satellite clock because that receiver clock is related to this GPS locator object part basically. So, that receiver clock is allowed to have, have an offset uh, relative to the GPS satellite clock because these GPS satellites, these satellites clocks are calibrated with the uh, uh, st uh, con GPS control station around the world and they are basically using the three atomic clocks and actually by using that uh, uh, offset relative to the uh, satellite, we have a time delay measurement which is going to be made and that measurement actually will have an error caused by the clock offset because individual satellite GPS satellite clock is uh, calibrated with the station located in a particular part of the world whether that object has a receiver clock which is in another time zone that is why there is a offset between the uh, time of both the clocks and that uh, measurement of the offset or time offset time delay is basically known as the error and that is made by the clock offset. So, it is a very important consideration. So, when we want to locate the position by using some mathematical part or the coordinate, uh, coordinate system, this is the example in which you can easily see that this is the satellite 1, this is the satellite 2 and this is the 3 each one have r1, r2, r3 distance and for this they are creating for r1, arc1, r2, arc2, r3, arc3 and at the intersecting point of these three arcs actually there is the point where they are locating the object x. So, this GPS receiver is at point x. Basically, GPS receiver is always mounted on the object which you want to locate as every plane, every vehicle today they are having the GPS receiver. So, GPS receiver is at point x and the three arcs lies on the surface of the uh, uh, sphere centered on the E GPS satellite S1, S2 and S3 which with the radii of uh, radii of one R1, R2 and R3. So, intersection of th these three spheres having that point in the space. So, 
basically what is going to happen here actually they are using a coordinate system that is uh, just uh, other than the uh, conventional uh, coordinate system and that coordinate system is known as earth centered earth fixed coordinate system in this earth centered earth fixed coordinate system the z axis of the coordinate system is directed toward the earth north pole and x and y axis are in the equatorial plane of the earth means this coordinate system is continuously rotating with the earth because of this arrangement then the x axis passes through the greenwich meridian line and the line 0 with zero magnitude on the earth surface and the y axis passes through the 90 degree of the east meridian so by this arrangement you can easily understand that that ecef coordinate system is also rotates with the earth so as per the ECE, ecef coordinate system you can know that the receiver coordinates are ux uy uz and the four satellite coordinates are xi yi zi where i is equal to 4 1 2 3 4 satellites so how it is going to be done first of all we are going to measure the distance so the measured distance to a satellite number i is called a pseudo range pri because it uses the internal clock of the receiver to make a timing measurement that include error caused by the receiver clock offset as i told you there is a difference between the uh, receiver clock and atomic clock of the satellite gps satellite that is going to use here to uh, define that pseudo range for individual satellite so we are having that pseudo range denoted by pri is measured from the propagation time delay ti between the satellite and the gps receiver assuming that em wave travel with the velocity c c for the light uh, speed of light meter per second so pri is equal to ti into c a meter then the distance of r between two points a and b in the rectangular coordinate system is given by that is r square is equal to x a minus x b square plus y a minus y b square plus z a minus z b square meter square so this is for the rectangular coordinate system so by combining these two equation the equation that relates pseudo range in time delay are called ranging equation by using this ranging equation you can easily identify the gps uh, receiver where it is located so these are the equation so in these equation this uh, tau part is basically uh, tau is the receiver clock error offset or bias with four equation we can solve the four unknown values and we can find out the answer so these are the basic uh, gps basic principle in which you can easily understand that how you are going to locate the part now for this gps individual frequency and codes are going to be used so whenever these type of question basically this question is asked in the two marks question that uh, what are the basic code that is used by the gps code so that are course acquisition code or c by a code or precise code or p code actually what is happening here these code are derived from the various arrangement so for that they are using two carrier frequency ln1 l1 and l2 for this you can easily understand that the signal l1 for which the carrier frequency used is 1575.442 megahertz is modulated with the 1.023 mbps pseudo random bit sequence and this code is called as course uh, acquisition code and it is used by the public basically in public domain this code is going to be used so there are various question are going to be made first question is for where we are using this c by a code we are using in this civilian application and what is the frequency uh, carrier frequency that is 1575.42 megahertz and when we are talking about this pseudo sequence pseudo random sequence actually you are generating a pseudo random sequence by exhoring the individual uh, bits to generate a unique random sequence so that is also a part of digital communication part where you easily understand that because that technique is known as dss direct sequence sped spectrum in which a given signal or a given bit is exhorted uh, with the 
uh, existing uh, random uh, uh, created random sequence. So basically in the next one when the, we are talking about the signal L2 actually this signal L2 have a frequency of uh, carrier frequency of 1227.6 megahertz which is modulated with the 10.23 mbps pseudo random bit sequence and this called this code is called precise code or p code it is used in military positioning system means c by a code used for the public p code is used for the uh, military application so generally this p code is transmitted in encrypted form and it is called a y code also and the p code gives better measurement accuracy when compared to the c by a code since the bit rate of p code is greater than the bit rate of c by a code that's why it is more uh, reliable and more accurate that why is it is used in the military application so these are these are the gps codes and the frequency that is used by the gps system now the satellite acquisition system when we are talking about the satellite acquisition system actually this is the process in which uh, you are going to uh, locate the satellite by following the uh, signals because uh, your individual object or individual system which is going to be monitored that is having a GPS receiver and that GPS receiver have to initially search the GPS satellite signal. To follow that process or to for that signal uh, acquisition these steps are going to be followed. So that first step is it select a frequency receiver this frequency is denoted by the gps receiver which one is going to use this then select a satellite by sv number generate that satellite c by a code because for the public domain you have to use that c by a code and you have to generate that c by a code then try all 1023 start position of the code to attempt to the correlate with the received signal it means you are going to make a correlation there then the repeat the step for the three time three several times and if correlation is obtained repeat another three time to confirm means you have to find out as per that uh, 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 modulated uh, bit rate 1.023 megabyte per second you can easily relate that you have to try for 1023 start positions and you have to repeat that same process three several times and each time you have to confirm that then if no correlation is obtained there try a different sv code repeat until 24 operational sv code has been tried so it means that correlation and that process is continuously going on till that correlation will be obtained so then if no correlation again obtained then change to a different receiver frequency then after that you repeat the step 2 to 6 until a satellite is acquired means a gps receiver is continuously doing this 2 to 6 process until and unless it is acquire a satellite then one of the first satellite is acquired then decode the navigation message to find other visible satellite and their doppler shift then repeat the acquisition process which will be much quicker given than the additional information available means as soon as you are going to locate or acquire the first satellite then by using the satellite gps message you can find the another visible satellite and make a group of four satellite by using that four satellite and considering the years of doppler shift you can repeat the acquisition process which is much quicker given the additional information available so after that change to the tracking mode in which doppler shift and the code rate are tracked through the frequency and code loop loops so this is the process by which you are continuously monitoring the satellite so in this complete process you can easily understand one point here that in gps system actually you are using only three satellites at a time to locate uh, only two four satellites at a time to locate a object in three dimensions and for that you have to follow this signal acquisition process so when we are talking about these all things that is the basic part of the gps and this is the way in which gps is going to locate the uh, position of a individual uh, object so in the next lecture we are talking about the various gps segments and the other points related to the gps till then thank you